spend with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. Well, we've been talking about behold the pattern. We've already gone through four lessons or let's say one, three lessons on it. And we'll conclude today. But we talked about how important it is to have a divine standard. And we talked about we stand at the crossroads and ask which way do we want to go? We want the old paths. We want to go back to that which was in the beginning. That which God has always laid out. Because God has always had a pattern and a design in everything in which he presented. The Bible declares that it presents truth. So does it deliver on that regards? The answer is unequivocally yes. The Bible is replete with all truth. There is no falsehood found therein. And so we read passages, sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. And how the Bible is our, our standard. Does the Bible need to be updated with times? No. We talked about that and showed how the message of the Bible is timeless. It has been delivered once for all time in Jude, the third chapter. And uh, or Jude, the first chapter. Jude's only got one chapter, verse three. <laughs> Starting to sound like some of our politicians kind of stumbling over my words. But uh, it's been delivered one time. We talked about the manifold wisdom of God. Talked about the eternal purpose of God. We also talked about how authority is established by direct command, by necessary inference, and or by approved example. Now, sometimes approved example is also referred to as apostolistic. Apo now I'm back. Uh, example of the apostles and what they set in place. And uh, we realize if they did it, that it is approved for us. So those are the three ways. We talked about authority, generic. And generic is basically, you know, I just want you to go. How you go, I don't care. I want you to assemble. But where you decide to assemble as a congregation is entirely up to you. But again, all this goes according to a pattern. We looked back at Noah, the construction of the ark. We talked about how, well, upon closer inspection, God has always had a pattern in everything that he has done. There has been an absolute pattern, an arrangement. You look at the passage in, in Exodus, First Kings, and so on according to, according to, is used in every one of those, which is indi uh, indicative of a pattern. So, we also talked about shadow and substance. How Christ is the substance. How Christ is the foundation that was talked about back in the book of Isaiah, in the 28th chapter, verses 16 and 17. He is the very foundation upon which everything is built. He is the substance of all things. That's what Paul talks about in the book of Colossians. So you begin to see this beautiful pattern, this tapestry, that according to Paul's writing in uh, Ephesians first chapter, that was set in place before the creation. Before God even created the earth, he had a pattern, had an arrangement. And how dare anyone think that we could alter that pattern? Well, it's clear enough for everybody to see that we can look at it. We can see the absolute preeminence of Christ. If you go back into the book of Colossians, into the first chapter. 
and you drop down with me into verse 18. And um, as we talked about in our overview of the New Testament, in Colossians, what Paul is trying to do is showing the absolute supremacy of Christ. In Ephesians, talks about the grandeur of the church, but that the church is alive because of Christ. Colossians, Christ is the preeminence, and as a result, he is the foundation of the church. But look at verse 18. Colossians 1, verse 18. He is also head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3.17 He is the substance. Everything else pointed to Him. In that pattern that God had, everything was directed to Christ, for Christ. As a result, He has all power, all authority, and dominion. But again, it's all according to a pattern. Yesterday, Linda was watching uh, a program uh, called Homestead Rescue. And I'm sure some of you have seen it. But the, the guy, Marty, I think his name is, he went out to a homestead and there was a yurt there. And he went into the yurt and said, I'm tearing it down. And the homeowner said, no, 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 no. You can't tear it down. He goes, great, I'll leave. Well, you can't leave. You came here to help us. Got to tear it down because there's black mold throughout it. And you've been sick because of it. So down it comes. And then he starts to build a log yurt. He knows how it's going to go together. Why? Because he's done it before. And then he gets to the point where they're going to put the roof on. So he makes an octagonal. Put up on the roof. Why? Because that's the way it's done. And see, as I watched the show, these homeowners, these landowners, kept asking them, why? Because that's the right way to do it. Why? Because I've done it before. It works. You're going to keep bugging me about this. I'm leaving. It works if we follow God's word. Why? Because God put it into place. God is the authority. God is the, the one who, who arranged it, designed it, implemented it, brought it into motion, and it all centers in and around Christ. We had some friends shortly after Linda and I were married. And uh, we lived down at the bottom of a hill next to the pond. But you went up the dirt path up to their house. Oh, it was ramshackled. You needed Marty and his daughter and son to come in and redo it. But it used to have, and the only thing really that held it together was a center post. And everything was off of that. Dan would have looked at it and go, oh, no. But we would go up there, never thinking anything about it. But it was all held in place by that one centerpiece. God's plan and pattern is all held together by one centerpiece. That is Christ. Now, when man does something, that one centerpiece is not enough. It needs support mechanisms all around. But when God centered his in, in and around his son, that he is the foundation, that everything is built upon him, that's by design. And by design, we walk in him. We follow those directions, that pattern, 
But if we deviate from the pattern, where will it stop? Where will it stop? I like people that are feisty. I really do. I like people that are non-traditionalists. This lady, yeah, a bit too much. She deviated from the pattern, but she's going to stand back in glorious splendor. But if you saw her walking down the street, you might begin to wonder. You might just begin to wonder. But what happens if you deviate from the pattern? Paul wrote to Timothy and said, retain the standard of sound words, which you have heard from me in the faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Follow the standard, sound words. Look back at Proverbs 14 chapter and verse 12. Notice what Solomon talks about and the importance therein. And I think this is apropos because uh, it transcends from one testament to the other. 1412. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Turn over a couple more chapters. Well, actually, five more chapters to the 19th chapter. Drop down at verse 21. Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord, it will stand. So that's what we want to do. That's what we strive to do in everything that we are about. To simply follow the edict that God has put in place. Nothing more, nothing less. Because if, if we transgress that line, where will it end? Do you realize that most, most if not all, denominations at one time did not have the instrument of music? They did not use it. Catholic Church for centuries was known only for Gregorian chant and antiphonal music. Antiphonal is a cappella. They would sing out a question in many instances, kind of like a cantor in a Jewish, Jewish service. And then they, congregants would sing back. In the Free Methodist Church, they called it responsive reading and somebody who would be up would lead and it was lyrical and they would read something you would have your little book and you'd read back the answer well that's the way singing was done for a long time and even Wesley said no 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 instrument Luther others no instrument. I love music. When uh, Terry asked Linda, should there be anything they would bring Friday night? I told Linda, tell Randy his guitar. It didn't get to you, Randy. I know you would have. But I love music. I love it. I love it. But there was a time and a place for musical instruments. And now's not the time. And now's not the place. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in the heart to God. If we cross that line, where will it end? And it's going to end with somebody up here with an electric guitar, a bass, set of drums, probably an organ for the spirituality of it. And that's where it's going to go. Maybe eventually with a big brass section. But you cross the line. Now you cross the line regarding music, you cross the line regarding anything else. Where will it end? My father was born in 1912. And uh, he had all sorts of old saying. He was Welsh. 
and he would speak a little bit of Welsh. I used to know Welsh, but who do you talk to in Welsh anymore? <clears throat> so I lost it. Well, what are the things he would used to say? And he used to say to me, if I give you an inch, you're going to take a mile. And my response was, give me the inch. Whereupon I got in trouble. But that's true. And if we cross that line, it no longer ceases to be the church. The manifold wisdom of God is made evident through the church. So if I break the pattern, if I deviate from the design, it ceases to be the design God put in place. So when we started this, this lesson, simply behold the pattern. Because God has always had one in place, and it is imperative for us to pay attention to it. But people come back and go, oh, well, you know what? We're close. We're close. I had somebody tell me that one time. Well, you know, you're with the Church of Christ. You follow the scriptures. That's good. But we're close enough. I'm going to drag out another old saying. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I understand horseshoes. I understand hand grenades. And I understand the pattern of design God has in place. When the nation of Israel divided, after the death of Solomon, the people came to Rehoboam. And they appealed to Rehoboam, lessen our tax burdens. Dan and I were talking about that in, before our services with all the taxation that we have here in California. How, how difficult it is. Taxation. And so we've always had taxation. The people went to Rehoboam and said, please, please lessen the burden a little bit. And he said, I'll take it under advisement. And he called in the older ones and they said, yeah, people are, are hard pressed. Pull back on the taxes and they'll serve you. He called in his friends, his young friends. What shall I do? Ah, uh, they're not taxed enough. So Rehoboam goes, oh, I like that. So he takes the message back, tells the people, you thought my father was hard? I'm paraphrasing here out of 1 Kings 12. You ain't seen nothing yet. When he said that, it divided the nation. Some stayed with Rehoboam. The majority went with Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was concerned because he knew that the people would eventually, because of spiritual reasons, gravitate back to Rehoboam. So what he decided to do was he decided, I've got to make a religion. I've got to. And so what he did was he made a religion like unto. Oh, it's almost like. But it didn't have the right priesthood. But it was like unto. You didn't have to go to Jerusalem. But we'll put a temple in Bethel and Dan. Like unto. It could have been as close as possible. But unless it was less was spot on, following the design, it was off track. It was a less, uh, excuse me, a religion predicated on convenience. It was one that had the assumption of authority that was not his to give. And that's where we are sometimes today in the religious world. Because let's face it, we're in the religious world. 
people drive by here and they see our sign. They think, oh, well, that's just another denomination. No. No, we are an autonomous entity. We are autonomous. We call ourselves the body of Christ, the church of Christ. We have no earthly headquarters. None. What we decide for this congregation has to always be with a view to the scriptures. Has to be. There are other congregations that name, that wear the name Church of Christ. And they've decided different things for themselves. That's what they have the right to do. But they need to do it in accordance with God's word. I have been told that congregations are are utilizing what we put out every Sunday. They're putting it on their website. Great. But Linda asked me, if they're doing wrong, do we want to be identified with them? And I think back to what Paul wrote in the Ephesians. I glorify in the fact that Christ is being preached. We're not doing what's wrong. We're doing what's right. And as long as this congregation exists, it needs to follow the pattern. Nothing more. Nothing less. And by so doing, we will be found acceptable in the sight of God. In Mark, the seventh chapter, verse 10, Jesus talked about, In vain do they worship me, teaching, his doc, teaching for doctrine, the precepts of men. But then in verse 10, he said, Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. We don't ever want to hold to the tradition of men. Well, that brings us to a conclusion. This four or five part series on Behold the Pattern. As Terry told me a couple weeks ago, man, that was that was that was first principle. Yeah, it was and is. And sometimes we need to go back and hear first principles. To be reminded, we have a pattern to follow. A pattern to follow. I like doing paint pourings, acrylic paint pours, because they say you don't have, you can do whatever you want. But if you want it to work, you got to follow a pattern. You really do. You have to put a certain amount of this in, a certain amount of that. And then you have to do this and you have to do that. And if you don't, it's a conglomerate mess. It looks all discombobbled like a Jackson Pollock painting. But there's a pattern to it. And there's definitely a pattern to God's word. And it does not look discombobbled or disjointed. Because it all centers in and around Christ. And as we bring it to a conclusion, there is but one way, but one way, and that way is Christ. That's by design. And while we didn't touch on exactly what it takes to become a child of God in the lesson this morning, we'll be glad to sit down and study with you, show you what it would take. And maybe you already know what you need to do. You're willing to make your obedience complete to the point of being buried in the waters of baptism for the remission of your sins. Or if you need the prayers of congregation for strength or encouragement, however we might be of a spiritual assistance, we invite you to come while we stand and sing the song selected.